Hello friends, the Pain Colony is back. As a part of our Ultra Supreme Max difficulty challenge, we are going to be... Bubbles, why are you on this side of the door? Oh, it's because I didn't stop you from doing so. Uh, Bubbles is not allowed over here. Uh, we are going to be... Uh, and just to recap this a little bit, let me bring up the slide here. We are going to be playing on the hardest asteroid possible, on the worst seed, getting all the achievements, highest difficulty... We're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff in this run, but the idea is just to see if this run is possible. So this is the hardest run I could think of, uh, really just without like mods or anything like that. Which I should mention, by the way, I did mention in the comments a couple times about that. Um, I tend to avoid mods only because um, it is something that creates a little bit of a barrier to entry. I'm trying to get bubbles over here, by the way. Creates a little bit of a barrier uh, to entry to other people if they wanted to follow along. So I didn't want to, like, uh, make a situation where you have to, if you want to play along with me, you have to install a bunch of extra mods. So I know there are ways that this could be harder. And honestly, there are ways to just make this totally impossible via some of these mods. Um, I may go back and do some modding stuff eventually, but for right now, um, the thing that I really want to focus on is just stuff that's vanilla in the game right now. What's the hardest way we can make this uh, run happen with just vanilla stuff and not any uh, modding for the time being? So I just wanted to answer some of that because I was getting some questions. Uh, where we left off, by the way, is I need water. Um, I want this water and I want it down here. Mainly because uh, we will eventually need to wall everything, but I don't care that much if this water gets hot. So I want this water so that we can start making more efficient food. And when Bubbles has downtime, Bubbles can be producing food as well. Um, she is just going to be stuck in this little area, which is what we were doing in the last game. Uh, so that's what we we're going to be focusing on for a good amount of this video. But what I wanted to do and what I mentioned uh, in the previous video is that uh, I will not be re-recording, or sorry, I will not be recording all of these uh, runs like in a batch like I was doing with my walkthroughs. I'm going to be doing them all as they come out. So. If you are watching this video, or if you're watching a previous video, that means that it's just barely happened. And I will not start recording a run, or rather a video, until the previous one has released and has been out for at least a couple hours. So, um, I will also be talking a lot about the comments that you guys left there, because I am sure that I'm going to need some help on this in some way. Um, and there's a lot more people in this universe than me that know how to play this game really well, so that will help me out a lot. So, yeah, that's going to be the thing that we focus on um, when playing this run, is I will just be releasing them basically as they happen. There might be some, a little bit of periods of randomness here and there for when I can actually get videos done. So it might not be on like a set schedule, but I do want to make sure to answer a lot of those. Um, and I'll kind of talk about those as we're playing. So just a quick recap of what we have going on right now. Um, the things I need to pay attention to... I'm still separating my seeds into different places, so you can see some of them starting to get planted in the places that I need them to. I need to get access to pips, so I should probably get up here and get this one so it can start distributing the uh, arbor seeds up in this area. This area over here is going to be a lot of mealwood, so this pip has been busy planting some mealwood, but it is starting to plant some other things that I don't want it to plant, so I do need to take care of that and kind of get these seeds out of here and mark them all for sweep. Uh, this area looks fine. The other thing I'm a little bit worried about is this hatch is still here. So if any food is on the ground, I need to be careful. Um, let me actually move this over here so that it is not in a spot that this hatch can eat it. Uh, let's see. Some other comments that came in. Um, somebody asked a question about planting these oxy ferns, um, and whether that would invalidate the achievement. And I realized that I didn't really talk too much about the achievements that we're trying to get. I mean, we're obviously trying to get all of them. Hey, there's one done. We made a bed in a bathroom. Easiest achievement in the game. Alright, these three are the troublesome ones. So one of them is locavore, and it literally says no farmed plants. That means I can't even plant the oxy ferns inside the tiles, and that will invalidate the achievement. So I'm going to have to go without planting anything, and that includes even non-food plants for a little while. Um, so those are going to be my focus here for a little while. These are really just restrictions. We're going to be on this for the rest of the game, so... We won't ever really violate those. It'll just be a matter of time before we get it. The carnivore stuff, we're going to have to really charge up into our ranching quickly. 
Um, and the most important things to ranch are these hatches because they will drop a good amount of meat. We will also ranch the pips just because that'll give us a little bit extra, but the hatches are the most important thing. The clock that we're on here, we have a duplicate that already is gonna be specced out to be our rancher. So this is going to be Jean, and he will get his ranching ability around cycle like 10 to 12. It might be a little bit later than that, I don't remember for sure. So we need to make sure to keep research going, and we need to make sure to uh, get everything that we need in order to basically stay alive. But the other thing that we're on the clock for is all this heat dissipating into our base. So we really need to get on top of that. There was also a comment that was left um, that is interesting, but I'm not going to abide by it too much. Um, their comment is that if you create little vacuums here in between these tiles, and the tiles will not transmit heat diagonally, you can create a way that this heat creep will stop by just mining out tiles next to it. I don't want to do that. Um, that is definitely a good idea, but I feel like anything that's just going to short circuit the challenge is not really that, it's not as exciting as it would be just to do it the way that it was intended. So I'm going to be doing it that way. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that. The other thing that we're not allowed to do that we could do, like there's a whole bunch of um, glitches and exploits and stuff that we could do. One of them that I'm not going to do is the trick where you can plant a plant into a place that you're not allowed to, but it domesticates it. So basically you can get the flower pots and um, you can use a trick with the pips to plant stuff in flower pots that makes them domesticated, but like, which makes them grow a lot faster, but it doesn't count as something really being planted. So it's kind of an exploit. I'm not gonna be using that either. I will be trying to do this as, as much as they intended as possible. So here's the weird thing. Um, I need water over here. And I'm gonna try to fill up this chamber with this water the best I can. I might even run this water over as well. But Bubbles is really the big problem uh, in this colony right now because she's so slow. So I need to find a way to keep Bubbles in this area and doing stuff that's productive and keep everybody else off of these as much as I can. So let me drop the priority of researching so that they're not really attracted to doing it unless there's basically nothing else to do because I want Bubbles on that as much as possible. So we got our research here for a couple things in the food area. I think we have another one queued up. Yeah, so we're just going to be aiming to get up our great hall after this. So we need a way to produce food and we need a great hall. We need to also be moving all of our seeds and stuff like that. So we're going to stay on top of that. Yeah, look how slow Bubbles is. Just very, very slow. Uh, so yeah, just going to keep kind of plugging along here and getting those other bits of research. I'm going to start Lice Loaf and kind of keep it running at all times, and Bubbles will be the person that I want to do this if I can. So I did have Ren uh, as a cook, but I'm going to drop him down, and I'll put Bubbles back up so that we can keep this. The other thing that I wanted to mention, by the way, in the comments that I was going to respond to is this Enable Proximity. Um, I have honestly never tried to use this before because this did not exist back when I learned how to play this game. And like a lot of things that come out, um, I don't realize that they're there until someone tells me about it. So the reality is that proximity uh, priority has always been a thing as far as I've understood. It just hasn't been as obvious. So that just kind of bumps up the formula a little bit from what I can tell. I'll experiment with it another time. Um, in this one, I'd try to, I'm going to try to stick to uh, playing the way that I know how to play so I don't get too sidetracked and uh, wind up kind of hamstringing myself into a bad position. The other thing we got to remember is we need to move all of these shine nymph eggs uh, up into here because we are going to be producing a lot of our oxygen from this area. So let me get this. Uh, I need to also expand this and make sure I have another outhouse ready. Otherwise, I'm just going to be, you know, wasting time uh, not with my duplicates actually filling up these outhouses. And filling up these outhouses and keeping them full is going to be a really key to what we're doing here. So. We're almost at nighttime here. There's not going to be a whole lot for us to do, so let's just go ahead and skip forward to the next day. Okay, it's tomorrow. Yay, we're back. So one thing that I also need to make sure of is that if I ever have jobs that are like this that I could be doing more efficiently, I need to make sure to cut out any inefficiencies that I possibly can to keep my duplicates working as effectively as possible. So 
Again, we're just going to be trying to drain stuff down here. I don't want my duplicates to get too wet, but they will need to get wet for just a minute to uh, get all this stuff taken care of. Uh, we're almost to the bottom, so we can start planting our oxy ferns. We have a pip that is working on our mealwood right now. Uh, there's a pip that we're going to try to get to to get the rest of our arbor trees all planted. So yeah, just going to keep making progress on this front. One other thing that I wanted to answer from the comments last time that I think is worth noting is I did say that if you mine out this oxalite, it winds up hurting you, but that's actually not true. Uh, what happens, and if somebody comes over here and does this, then great, but... Uh, the idea is that whenever you mine something, you actually get half the mass that it originally was. But the thing that they fixed with oxalite, here we go, is it will drop half the mass, but the actual amount that it gasses off is still the same as if it were still mined there. So uh, I wanted to correct myself and definitely mention that people pointing out in the comments were definitely correct. So worth noting for sure. Okay, so once I get this all flooded and I get uh, access to water and stuff like that, we'll be able to fill up our wash basin, which we haven't done yet. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue to sweep, just going to continue to expand. We now have access for the oxy ferns, so I'll start grabbing some of the plants that are down here. Obviously leaving the oxy ferns and grabbing everything else. The meal wood, again, I'm just going to leave there until it's actually grown before I try to move it. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to keep on our research here. Once the next research is ready, we're going to keep going, but it's really going to be centered around uh, getting our great haul up because we need uh, morale to be lifted for these duplicates so we don't start suffering all their stress reactions. So I'll just be busy doing that in the meantime. Okay, about to open up this big path of water. So here we go. Ren's going to be a little bit unhappy for the meantime, but I think we still have a lot of our bonuses from the game first starting in terms of stress management. So... Yeah, he'll be sopping wet, but uh, we still have the new friend and a couple of other things that'll help us out. Shouldn't be too bad, but now that we have all this stuff, actually this might help us uh, uproot all these plants. So we don't have to have our duplicates spending time doing that. But what we do have is we have access to water now that is near where we're going to be making food. So Bubbles, you can also assign some mush bars to be made here. She'll prefer to research, but we will need to make a lot of mush bars over time. And kind of the earlier you can do that, the better. Uh, this is not something I would normally recommend doing. And this is just because we're going to be desperate for food for a little while. So I need a way for Bubbles to be able to contribute without um, having her run all over the map. So yeah, just going to be kind of pouring my water down into here. This will also help the heat creep just a little bit as well. I don't care if this water gets too warm. Um, it may get unnecessarily warm, but it shouldn't be too big of a threat to the rest of our base. Okay, here we go. We finally have an outhouse that's full. I need to make sure this does not get emptied, and I also need to note when this happened. So I'm keeping track of this on my uh, little notepad here on the side, and I'm noting when it happened because every two days I need to make sure that when this morb spawns that I uh, reset the game, basically or reset the outhouse. This is going to be the way that we spawn morbs. And I still don't quite understand the point of having it done this way. I feel like this is a bug and that this should just spawn a new morb every two days anyway. But basically, if you reset the building by either restarting the game or building a tile underneath this outhouse, uh, it'll start a clock. And after that clock is up, after two days, it'll spawn a new morb. And we're going to be pretty dependent on that to uh, generate a lot of our oxygen. So here we go. Got a lot of seeds now. Sweep all this stuff up. And again, I have only have very specific bins marked to receive these. So any of these seeds that I need to be moved somewhere else, they're going to get moved to a specific bin uh, and replanted in the places that they need to be. So yeah, just still can kind of continuing to fan everything out. We'll just kind of keep expanding and we'll get our food going here in a bit. Okay, we've made a little bit of an expansion to get a great haul up here. Not quite big enough yet, but we'll add a few more tiles and get this up here. And that will solve a good amount of our morale for a little bit. Um, we're also going to need a nature preserve, or rather a nature reserve, which we don't really have right now. Uh, I may need to grab another pip to help me plant stuff, and I kind of want to make it over here so that it's near a place that my duplicates are going on a regular basis. So 
Most of the days they will wind up eating and then going to sleep sh shortly afterwards. So if I can keep them in this area and force them to route through a nature reserve, that'll help out our morale quite a bit. So yeah, definitely got that part up. Also making doubly sure to not clean our outhouses. So we're gonna really need to keep an eye on that. And now that we have our water down here and pretty much ready to go, I wish it was a little bit closer to this food area. Um, I probably could have built this a little bit better, actually, if I had dug this out, but I just don't know how much time I have to spend doing all that, so I don't know. The other thing that's going to start being a concern is uh, stress. Stress is going to start setting in here pretty quickly. That's part of the uh, morale uh, updates that I'm basically making by adding the Great Hall uh, to help out with that, but yeah, we're going to need to keep up on that here pretty soon. Research-wise, we are starting to get our ranching research, and we're still quite a few ways away uh, from getting it, but I want to make sure that it's ready the instant that it is available. So uh, we'll be getting on that here pretty shortly, too. So yeah, we have a great haul now. We have enough places for everybody to eat, so that should help out our morale for just a bit. But yeah, still just going to be continuing to expand. I'm going to try to get into the insulated tiles here pretty quickly, because it's going to start becoming a big problem uh, the longer I wait, so... Yeah, definitely a lot to do and trying to keep a, a, this all efficient, but... Oh, he's going to get stuck if I'm not careful. Trying to keep this all efficient, but yeah, we need a way for Bubbles to contribute and continue doing things, even when we don't need any more research. We're also waiting for Bubbles' uh, skill to kick in to get advanced research, which it just did, so there we go. Uh, the rest of these I'm going to save. I'm not going to actually assign these because I want as many ranchers as possible when the time comes, so... Now Bubbles has access to make food as well as all of the uh, researching and power generation and stuff like that. You can still micromanage your duplicates to get them off of stations that you might not want them on, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of that too. So, yeah, just kind of plugging along here, finding shine nymph eggs to move in here every once in a while. I guess I already have four. That's a lot. Maybe I shouldn't send that one in yet. Okay, so yeah, I'll just kind of keep plugging along, keep going forward. Uh, we'll get more of our oxy ferns planted the best we can, but yeah, there's a lot to do. All right, now we're seeing the real pain of if we lose track of where Bubbles is, she takes forever to get places. The night is almost over and she has not slept because she had to walk right here to get food. Um, so I'm going to create a door to kind of lock Bubbles in here. Uh, we need to really babysit her, which is very unfortunate because it's going to take a lot of effort uh, over time to kind of keep her up to speed because she is so slow. Um, she will eventually get better, but yeah, it's just going to take a while. And she's already supposed to be going back to work. You can see she's supposed to be supplying ingredients right now, but uh, I don't want her to walk all the way over there. So I need to do a lot of manual management to make sure that she is not going places that I don't want her to. Actually, I need to not put a door here. I need to probably put it a little bit further over. The other annoying thing with this is this is going to make... Hmm, now I'm rethinking this. Let's actually change uh, course just a little bit. What we're waiting on right now is we're waiting on advanced research to start, but we don't actually have it uh, done. So I'm going to change course so that Bubbles has something else to do. Uh, but I need to make a way for this to constantly be supplied with stuff, but not require Bubbles to go get it since it's so far away. So, yeah... That's a pretty big mistake, honestly. I wish I would have just created a pool right here for her to use so she could get it herself. But this is honestly a deal breaker, having to have her travel that far. Um, yeah, that that's a bummer. So we'll just put up a door. We'll just prevent her from going over there for right now. I am keeping track of the time. So at night time on cycle 7 is when I need to reset because that's when a morb is going to respawn. So I'm just keeping my eye on that. And continuing to expand. Uh, the biggest thing that I'm worried about right now is our oxygen saturation is dropping pretty fast. So I'm trying to get into these other little pockets of oxalite uh, so that those can gas off and we can at least survive on that for a little bit. But yeah, we need to do a lot more digging. We need to definitely get our protection up against this heat because it is spreading fast. Uh, but yeah, so should be pretty interesting. I guess we'll just keep going. Okay. It is the night of the 7th, and we have a morb spawn, so I need to write down in my notes that there's going to be two more days when the next morb is going to spawn, which is going to be the night of the 9th. So what I'm going to do now that this morb has spawned is I'm going to save the game, which uh, going to reveal some of my saving patterns here, but 
Save as, yeah, post one, whatever. Post two. And we're going to go to the main menu and we are going to reload the game. Uh, this is a tactical reload, uh, just so that it resets the building. My duplicates don't have to spend time managing this, but this is gonna allow a new morb to spawn in two more cycles from that uh, outhouse. And we're gonna continue to fill up outhouses in this same manner in, in the same manner over time, because this is gonna be a majority of our oxygen production. And note that I'm putting all of these shine bugs in here because they will uh, put out some radiation to clean the uh, basically polluted oxygen that these morbs put out so that my duplicates don't get a big slime lung outbreak, which can be devastating to this type of run. So, yeah, we've got our little reactor of uh, morbs putting out polluted oxygen here, and that'll help out our oxygen production here in the mid-game. Okay. Trying to get this pip stuck in here, so I have these uh, doors set to close. I'm going to try to get some more uh, meal wood and that kind of stuff planted here. Oh, no. So, I'm trying to just get this pip stuck uh, up here so that it's stuck in this room and can only plant in this room. There we go. Come on, close the door! Come on, hurry, 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 hurry! No! Oh, I don't know what... I think it's stuck. Ugh. <laughs> I'm trying to just get it stuck in here so I can create a nature reserve, but yeah, you might just need to do some weird stuff with getting these pips to get funneled to the right location before you have any of your ranching abilities. I'm pretty sure they can't move the critters before then. It'd be pretty funny if they could, but I don't think so. Yeah, see, you don't have the skill for it, so... Yeah, that's the best we can do to try to get them to move to one place, but as soon as I have this, I'll be getting a nature reserve up. We just need to get the research for it so that we can uh, get the right building, but yeah, Bubbles is still down here doing some research best as possible, making food for us. So we're in decent shape, I would say, so far, but yeah. Heat creep's getting a little bit scary in some spots, and I'm going to have to prioritize the spots that I want it to be uh, retained. So I will not be walling all of it immediately, and I really need to balance this out with my ranching, because that ranching needs to start up like immediately when it's time. So, lots to juggle here. There is another duplicate on offer, but I'm not just going to take duplicates every single time that they're there. Otherwise, this would literally not be possible with this setup. Um, so I need to wait, but I also need to assign skills to uh, our farmer when it is time, and I need to keep an eye out for that. So, that's going to be the plan. So, just kind of plugging forward, expanding out a little bit more, uh, getting our nature reserve up here so we can have some better morale. Uh, and make sure that our stress stays in check. Our only duplicate that's having a little bit of problems with stress is Jean. Uh, most of the time it's because he's got a full bladder and we have to travel so far. Once they get out of this area, it should be getting a little bit better. And we can... I might just wall this right here just to kind of get rid of all this area. But I do want these seeds and I do want the pips. So that'll be the plan for this. But... Yeah, slowly but surely creeping out some progress here. Oh, I need to make sure that this is enabled again. Let me reset Jean. There we go. Yep, we're going to have to do this a lot. If there's a task that's near you that needs doing and someone isn't paying attention, um, I'm just going to need to kind of reorient them, tell them to stop whatever they're doing so that they recalculate. So hopefully someone should be coming up here to drop some uh, dirt off. If not, nope, looks like everybody's on break. We might get some... Uh, some pee on the floor tonight, but, you know, happens sometimes. Pretty wild night, I gotta say. So, yeah, we'll keep going forward with that. Another morb should be spawning out of this outhouse, by the way. So we'll do our reset trick here as soon as this spawns, which we're just gonna watch like a hawk here, because there's nothing better to do. There we go. This one, I don't know when it actually started, but I'm fine resetting now just to sync these two up. So I'm gonna write down that the next spawn is gonna be at cycle 11. All of do my saving routine again, main menu, okay, and back into the game. So, yeah, that will, that'll be a theme here as we're trying to spawn more and more morbs. More and more and more morbs. Aha, caught somebody doing their, something they're not supposed to be doing. Wait, I caught somebody doing something they're not supposed to be doing. I think that's what I said, but I don't think I did. 
Uh, Abe should not be emptying this outhouse, so you really need to keep your eye on this and make sure that he does not do that. That is really bad for us if that happens, which is funny that it's one of the worst things that could happen right now. So yeah, get out of here, Abe. Stop emptying the toilet. Aha. Caught Bubbles trying to empty the toilet, too. Stop it. Gotta make sure to keep these guys off of those uh, outhouses. They really want to clean them, and I really do not want them to. The good thing, though, is that there is a little bit of something you could do here. Like, if you have Bubbles start and then stop again, uh, you could get her to, like, dirty her hands enough to the point that you might get some extra water out of the latrine. But, yeah, we need to find a way to have Bubbles stop doing this uh, and focus on something else. We're waiting on water to be sent to this, so I might need to bump this up in priority a little bit so that other people pay attention to it a little bit more, or I could just make an exception and let Bubbles through this door for the time being, as long as she doesn't get into these other places, so maybe we'll just do that. So yeah, just slowly crawling along here trying to get this research done. The thing that we're waiting on right now is our skill for Jean so that we can get our critter ranching up and running. In the meantime, I've started up a little terrarium for hatches over here, and you're going to have to kind of build these awkwardly shaped rooms since we're uh, stuck in such a small space. So yeah, this is going to be the hatch ranching area, but I need to finish the research. So uh, hopefully, wait, where'd Bubbles go? Why are you down in the water? Uh, hopefully this won't be too bad and we can keep Bubbles on task here. Uh, and keep our research flowing. Uh, she should be here in just a second, but yeah, still making some progress. Food's looking pretty good. Oxygen's starting to kind of fill out a little bit now that we have the more spawning. But yeah, as soon as we get the hatch stuff up, we will transition into that. All right, the other little adjustments that I'm doing here is I'm trying to make rooms where I can ranch these pips. But part of doing this is I need to shape this out in a way that if the pip planted a bunch of arbor trees that I give those arbor trees the maximum amount of space as possible to grow so that means one of these rooms can support more pips over time. We really want to increase our uh, population to be as high as possible with uh, each room so I'm just trying to optimize that the best I can and get this down to a size that I could fit basically one pip per arbor tree that's growing fairly unimpeded. Um, so I could fill this room up with pips and basically have a ranching area that's right here for the pips and right here for the hatches. But I do need to kind of shape out this room a little bit and make the ranching in here a little bit easier. Get rid of buildings and tiles and stuff that are in the way that are going to cause problems for the arbor trees branches growing out. So yeah, just going to kind of keep up on that too. Okay. So, uh, we're definitely going to need to... Well, I guess now that I notice this, we might as well do this. We need another outhouse. And lower this one down to one. But what we need to do is I really need to get some water moved over here. And since we've already kind of made our bed with this one, I'm going to put a pool of water right here. And we're just going to tactically kind of dump this water down there and then reseal it in a different way. So I'm just going to kind of block that off for the time being. Then we'll come back and we'll kind of build tiles to push the water over and stick it in here so that we can then just build a pitcher pump right there so that it's right next to what we need the water for to save ourselves a little bit of time. And also to get all this stuff out of the way, we could also use this as a ranching room in just a minute. So yeah, a couple of little projects that need to happen here. Sean, don't get stuck down there. Thank you. No one else? Yep. Okay. Cool. So now that we have that... And just go ahead and dig a ladder kind of all the way up and I'll ideally have it pour down like from the side actually I should probably just do this there then we'll just have them kind of dig it out and that should start a big flow of water going all the way down into here and yes it will block this off for the time being but we'll get tiles to kind of scoot it all over we're still waiting for the skill to be earned by Jean here oh he must have just gotten it because it's not showing up on the printing pod that's interesting. Okay. Well, now we have ranching, so we need to definitely get these hatches all wrangled in here. So I'm going to set this for hatches. It's very important that John focuses on this. So I'm going to make sure to set this at a very high priority. And wherever John is, I'm going to disrupt him to make sure that he stops what he's doing and gets up here. There we go. So we should grab this hatch after he uh, gets blessed by the light. 
Uh, should grab this hatch and uh, run it into the room and start ranching. We're going to also grab our pips here in just a minute too. I do want to ranch some shine bugs, but not right here. I'm going to start ranching shine bugs over here just so we can keep our population up inside this room. These will be so unhappy that they will not lay more eggs. So I need to make sure that I have a constant supply of eggs for these things because we're going to be breathing polluted oxygen for a little while uh, in this setup. So yeah, a couple things kind of happening at the same time here, but pretty interesting. So there we go. Once we get it all poured down there, my duplicates are going to be a little bit unhappy from being wet from something like this. So that'll be a little bit of a problem. Why are you having a hard time getting out of here? Oh, I guess I need to dig out that tile. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, they'll be a little bit unhappy for a minute, but there you go. Now we have a new water supply. We can just go ahead and drop this right here. And then uh, once this stops flowing, which should be here pretty quick, I can just start adding tiles like that and kind of push everything over until it's contained into the spot that I want it to be. So yeah, a little bit of a trick. I know I've showed that in some other videos, but that's definitely easier than trying to pump it all manually or something like that. So yeah, just going to kind of stay on this. We're going to have to be worrying about our stress here just a little bit, but now that we have our ranching going, I'd say we're pretty well on track. I'd also say that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long all these are going to be, and of course we're at a little bit of a slower pace than normal, only because there is so much going on, uh, and because there's so much to micromanage here. So what I'm going to do is I will continue to play this out for just a minute because I don't want to stop and reload my game. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to miss a morb spawn cycle, so <laughs> that'll be a little bit weird. I guess I'll just tack on the extra part when the morb spawn and call it good there. So I guess one more part. Okay, there we go. Got it all patched up. So now we have a fresh pool of water already here. All this stuff is all cleared out. All we should need to do is deconstruct all the buildings that are in the way and rebuild our ladders, and then we'll be back to where we started. So... Cool. Yeah, a little simple way to kind of move a bunch of stuff there. The other thing that we're going to start running into is our stress, our stress is starting to really become a problem. And it's mostly because of the soggy feet, but it's also because our oxygen density is pretty low. So we're going to need to start uh, adding some mesh tiles and that kind of stuff to help out with this. So research-wise, let's see. Do we even have anything going on right now? Yes, we have the tiles that are going on right now, but I need... Bubbles to stop doing this, and I need her to focus on research instead. So, yeah, we need to get those uh, insulated tiles. Still waiting on the morb spawn, by the way. I think I missed it by like half a cycle the last time I had reset uh, off camera. So, once that happens, we'll call this video good. And I'm still trying to feel. There we go. There's the extra morb spawn. I'm still trying to feel out when to take this fifth duplicate. The issue with the fifth duplicate is as soon as you take them, you will not be able to feed them with what we have on the map right now. We will barely be able to give them enough oxygen, and if we start running up against our stress uh, maximums, we're going to have bigger problems than we really signed up for. So, still a ton to do. Uh, we're making decent progress. And as soon as I stop and save this and call it good, we will be back on schedule for our morb spawns now that we have six of them. So yeah, things are kind of coming together, but uh, if you have any suggestions or anything that you want me to talk about, please leave it down in the comments. I will be only recording videos after I have posted the previous one, and I'll be waiting a few hours. So if there are any comments that you want me to react to or talk about uh, in the video, then they will need to be pretty shortly after the other one is uh, sp spawned, <laughs> uploaded. So whenever that does happen, go ahead and drop those comments in and I will uh, respond to them for the ones that really are relevant to the run and that kind of stuff. So if you want to get that in, please do so. All right. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll be back really soon with another part. See you later.